members can do that. Can you guys do that one? Right? Yeah. Sure. Now what See? I... Sure. See? Convincing, huh? Why would you want to do that? There are many reasons, Pat. Right? <laughs> You're engaged, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> now let's talk about something serious, shall we? Shall we get this? Shall we get okay, this on a right. level plane here? Right, let's do that. Let me let me fix myself. <laughs> so thank you for having me on, Patrick. You're right. Now so. <laughs> Sure is a lovely show. Love the band. Thank you. Is is Lyle is Lyle um, your real name? <laughs> Come over here. No. Yes, it's my real is it name. Is short for anything? No, Lyle. Just Lyle. All right. Any other Lyle? Pat Patrick? Lyle Lyle. <laughs> I just what? Like all right, you want to talk about the Raiders okay. at all? Ooh, they yeah. in trouble. They've had, I mean, you were there for some glory years, and yeah. uh, they ain't been glory years lately, and things aren't looking all that great for the coming season, frankly. What's, what's happening there? I well, mean, they really had I, a tradition of winning. I think the problem with the Raiders right now is basically that, you know, in the years that they had such dominant teams, they had great players like Art Schell and Gene Upshaw and Kenny Stabler, and a mixture of veterans and young players. And the, young, and the um, veteran players would teach the young players the specific attitude that the Raiders had. Yeah. You know, when you, when you would hit somebody on the field, there wouldn't just be one guy hitting the, hitting the opposite player. There'd be three and four. I remember the first time I played against the Raiders in 1971, um, I played against Art Chill, who was just was inducted into the Hall of Fame. And I remember taking the field and the coaching staff telling me to stay low on Art Chill and Gene Upshaw because Art Chill was 6'6", and he weighed 325 pounds, and Gene Upshaw was 6'5", and he weighed about 295. Stay low. And I was stay very low. And I'm just on over 6'3", and I weighed about 270. And Art Schell came off the line of scrimmage, and there's a certain technique that, that offensive lineman used that I didn't know at the time because I was a young, right. young kid, and he actually... And I bench pressed almost 600 pounds. Wow. And he actually picked me up off the ground and dropped me on my back and ran over me. I still got the cleat marks from where he, <laughs> well, you learned, where he did that. You learn quickly. But this is what, you know, Mandritz just signed his contract for a million a year. Yeah. A million dollars a year. Yeah. In 1970, I made $18,000 a year, and I called up my friend in New York and said, I'm rich! Yeah. <laughs> times, times have changed. You ever look at the papers and think, gee, what I'd be pulling down today, huh? It's, you it's know, a whole I, different world. But, but, let me, but uh, you think with the Raiders, there are any distractions with all the off-the-field stuff? I mean, what city they're going to be playing, the lawsuits? Did that ever bother you guys? Because it's always been kind of a controversial franchise in that way. I mean, you know, Al was always at Well, Al was, a very Al was a very independent uh, individual. He does things his own way, the way he believes Al in Davis, yeah. Al Davis. And I, 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 think, uh, I think Los Angeles is a great city to play in. I played here for the five years that I was with the yeah. Los Angeles Raiders, and I, I thought it was great. The fans were there. It was enthusiastic. When we won, people liked it. You know, if, if you don't win, they're not going to come watch you. It's just that simple. Yeah, it's true. I guess that's true in all sports. Yeah, you lost to uh, Palliers uh, lately, the twos, uh, recently. John, yeah, you know, John, the twos. Yeah, John, um, John was, a, was the type of human being that... Um, always crossed over a dangerous line. And a lot of guys who are in, in professional sports, I can't s specify uh, athletes, I don't want to get anybody in trouble, but unfortunately, this is a uh, drug-related situation in, in athletics. And, when you're and talking about the dangerous line, you mean drugs? Absolutely, and I think it's unfortunate that today's youth has to watch athletes who are tremendously gifted in many ways take that 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 course where they can what end happens? up dying. It, I, I don't believe. Is it the sudden I think money? That is it the is it the glamour of the whole thing? What 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 gets you in that? You think? I mean, here are guys who have everything to live for. I mean, a, a high profile sport and adulation and dough. Uh, you know, you yourself being in the public eye for many years and being very successful, know the pressures that it takes to be successful on a regular basis. And I think what happens to athletes that they come from a from a college and they get all this recognition and all this money, and I think that. As silly as it sounds to some people who aren't experienced in playing professional sports, that it becomes very lonely for a lot of guys. Hmm. Regardless of how many people you're around and how many uh, accolades you receive and money that you make, sometimes to find a, a, a piece of time that's satisfying to you and makes you feel good and happy inside, it's difficult to, to find that. And, it, and it's, it becomes even, even harder when you're in the public eye and you don't have that privacy. It's like it's not like meeting uh, a girl. I mean, it, if you go out and you meet somebody in your public eye, you're not sure. And it, for women also, I'm not just trying to specify yeah, yeah. men. But, but you mean the people if you're in the public you don't eye, know why you're not sure why being, they're attracted yeah. to you. But it's, yeah. a, it's a dangerous situation. And I was going to say before, athletes today, for some unknown reason, I don't have the answers to it. When I grew up playing.
playing football, I didn't go out, I didn't drink, I didn't, I didn't do any of those things. I played sports to be good at it, not to get high or anything else. And I think the athlete today is, is lost somewhat in the fact that they're taking the chance to cross over that line, not only destroy their careers, but their lives. Did you ever take steroids? No, I didn't. Ever tempted? Many athletes throughout the world, in our country and other countries, have taken them. It's the only way, actually, to compete today. The athletes who take steroids are athletes who feel that if they go on the field of competition, they're going to be facing somebody that could be taking the steroids. That's a physical known advantage to the athlete. Mm. And if he's not 6'4", 275 pounds, built like a like rock muscle, he's going to get beat. And he's going to get beat and lose his job. You think if you were playing today, you'd be, you'd be taking him? Well, it just depends on what the uh, medical uh, industry comes up with. I mean, there's, uh, there are situations where, um, if in, you know, I don't know if there's any documented proof at the moment what steroids actually does, if it's harmful to you or not. They're in a panic right now because it's, it's so widespread. And I think once they come down and, and really, <clears throat> excuse me, really have a proven fact of what it does and what it does not do, healthy or otherwise, <clears throat> I think then you can make the decision on what to do with it. We're going to take a break and come back and talk about uh, your future because you have some, uh, some broadcast plans. You're looking plans, good, Pat. You're looking good. You're thanks, rolling Pat, right along here, buddy. Pat, thanks, 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 thanks Lyle. Go. His real name is Lyle. Uh, we're going to be back in just it's a moment. It's actually Pat. But... <laughs> Patty, Patty. I have to do it. I have to do it. Oh, boy. He'll be That's Ajax show. Imagine sitting in a broadcast booth for three hours with this guy. Holy mackerel. Just read that. Just... Don't eat it. Read that. Read that. Let me read it. Now a word from Strock USA. Stork. Why don't Stork. you read it? Now a word from Stork USA, makers of Werther's original butter candies. Here, eat the butter. whole Butter. That's what I said. We'll be back. We'll be back. Thank you. Sometimes you can have a, a, a very gifted coach who, who can analyze a situation and, and, and perform under great pressure. But at the same time, an athlete who crosses personalities with a coach sometimes will be released to cut or traded because of that fact, regardless whether there's an impact player. I think the biggest mistake that the Los Angeles Rams made was to trade Eric Dickerson. He's an impact player, and you can never replace a man like and that. And it was a personality situation? Absolutely. The, with the uh, Los Angeles Raiders, they have Marcus Allen out of camp the entire exhibition season. Now, in my personal point of view, Marcus Allen should be the guy in the backfield. He is probably the most gifted athlete in the past 10 years in the NFL. I don't think it, it's necessary to have Bo Jackson come in, play seven games, and be paid more money than Marcus. I think Bo should be gotten rid of. Wow. Wow. And you don't mind saying so, obviously. No, why? What about... What, are you going to come beat me up? <laughs> you got a good point. Are you? I'm on your side. I, you Pat! What? Did that hurt at all? It did. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> now, when... Uh, it's sometimes said of former players, when they're in the broadcast booth, that they're afraid to criticize other players because they know them or they've been out there. And, well, and, that's hard. That's, that's the hard part of it because... You know that, uh, you know, wh I, I was just at this, um, this convention and I ran into Deacon Jones, who was probably the, oh. probably the greatest defensive lineman that ever played pro football. And I ran into Kellen yeah. Winslow, who was one of the best tight ends that ever played from San Diego Chargers. And, you know, there's a bond that you have with athletes that you've, per that you've played against or with. Even if your time and error was beyond theirs or mm -hmm. before theirs, you have this special bond and feeling for those guys because you've gone through a lot. You know, there's... Anytime you've, I know Merlin Olson was on here and he spoke yeah. about the injury factor. If you play anywhere over two years, you're going to have an injury okay. in every So game. there you are. Now you're in the broadcast booth. You see somebody out there, you know, not doing what he should be doing, not maybe putting all out, maybe missing a play, missing a tackle. Uh, you know this guy or you know maybe he's hurt. You know what he's going through. You know what it's like to be criticized. Will you be able to criticize him? Will you be able to point out that he didn't do what he should have been doing? I think it's important that you do that because if a player is, is, is a dominant force, and he's not playing up to par, it should be told why he's not playing up to par. Nobody's going to come on here and, 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 and have a great day every day. Mm -hmm. It's just impossible to perform it that Sounds way. like you might want to make excuses for this guy. No, I, I won't make excuses. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, no, just, I'm I, just trying to be probing. Going very, right? I was serious. <laughs> Sorry, Pat. That's all right. <laughs> um, no, I think it's important that you tell the audience that's watching the game why an athlete isn't performing up to yeah. par. Just like the band, they're great night in and night in and day in and day out. Look at them. Look at the outfits. They look wonderful. Yeah, all right. Fine. So you'll be talking about the great football uniforms. They paid uniforms. me, you know. This is money. Now, listen, uh, you, you've done some acting. You like, you like that? You want to do more of that? No, very much so, yeah. I, I really enjoy it. I, um, it's difficult because, um, for me, I mean, it's sometimes 
Um, how do I explain this? Uh, acting is different from football, in the, obviously, because it, it's sometimes if you make a football team and you're good enough, you're there for 10 years, mm -hmm. 8, 10, 12 years, sometimes 15, like I played. But as, it, as an actor or an actress, you can do a good job in a specific movie or, or TV or, or, or feature and then not work for six months. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's, it's a very insecure situation. And it makes the actors and actresses insecure for that specific reason. I mean, they could be wonderful. Uh, you could win the Oscar and then not work again for a year, and that, that's hard. You had a uh, you had a reputation on the field of, of being a kind of a, a I want to say a, yeah, maniac, rabble rouser, troublemaker, uh, talker. Uh, would you would you try to get under the skin of the other guys? I think it was it's very important. My my game as an athlete was in, was total intimidation. I wasn't the best athlete out there, but I always was capable of intimidating people. How, how would you do it? How, how, what were some of the ways you'd intimidate? Just by growling? Well, saying things? What? Honestly, um, no, I didn't want me to lie. Yeah, <laughs> no, no. tell the truth. Well, I would, <laughs> I would talk about um, their mother and their sister. <laughs> so, I, I get it. So you want to be truth, right? Guy, I mean, you'd, you're facing you're, some guy in the line, you'd lean over and say, what? Well, I can give you an example. Would you like an example? Well, I, I, God, I don't God know if help I can me, but say yes. these. I'll try to... You can imagine. We were playing against this specific team, and <laughs> my team was on their field, and we had heard, rumored through the week, that the wife of this specific player was fooling around. And the guy who was playing up on top of him was in the huddle and said, I'm going to try and destroy this guy's con concentration because it was third and short and we wanted to jump off sides and, you know, we were going to say something. Right. So the, <laughs> the player said to this big giant human, your wife is uh, with so-and-so. Well, the guy jumped off the line of scrimmage and not only went off sides, but chased my friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, see, I'm but, still pretty but, quick. You know? That's good, but you got the penalty. And, uh, and yeah, we got the penalty. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great you game, know, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's wonderful. It is. I, um, uh, unfortunately, I'm afraid you're going to give me another example, and I don't want you to. <laughs> um, <laughs> congratulations, things are going great, and, and uh, to, the first game uh, comes up uh, quickly. You want to uh, you want to you want to handicap just 30 seconds? Uh, who, do you, who do you think we'll see in the playoffs? Teams to look oh, for goodness, in the playoffs. Uh, Buffalo, Cincinnati, strong. Uh, the uh, NFC, uh, Washington could be strong, Philadelphia, the Giants. Okay. Uh, you know, it's hard to say because there's so much parity in the league now. There's so much distrib distribution of talent that's even throughout the league that it's hard to mm -hmm. say. But I, I, I think that the NFC is stronger than the AFC this year, and i like to see probably the Vikings win it all. Well, I think you'll do a swell job in that broadcast Thank booth. You. That's my hunch. It's that's my prediction. You. Thanks Patrick. a lot. You are swell, too. Uh, Thank Lyle you. Alzado. <laughs> We'll be back. Indigo Girls will be singing in just a minute.